Welcome to 13 Minutes of News, in 13 minutes or less. Uh, first of all, before we jump in, remember, all information that I'm talking about, first of all, these links will be in the show notes, but they're all found on uberliftdrivers.com. uberliftdrivers.com, it's not just a rideshare news site, it is for all gig economy work, and then some. You can find everything you want on here. If you work in the gig economy and you just want to catch up on some stuff real quick instead of having to dig through everything, that's your answer. Now, also, Rideshare Rodeo on YouTube. Subscribe now. Uh, you know, please uh, start watching on YouTube. We do some extra content on there other than the podcasts. And uh, while I'm on that note, I am still in the uh, co-hosting uh, months the, the first months of doing co-hosting, or it's kind of like a summer special thing. After two years of doing the podcast, I have co-hosts every week. And uh, this Monday, I have Zach Drives Fast. So make sure to join us for that. It's going to be fun. Um, I also have a new sponsor. No, oh, it's not Instacart, you fools. For real? place is trash. Um, but... I will be doing an Instacart challenge. Uh, I already did one in December, but I'm going to do it again just to show you guys at least what happens in my market. Details on that to follow, maybe even tomorrow during the open stream. Um, but I do actually have a new sponsor. I'm not going to say anything yet, but it is coming out soon. Um, and it's one I'm very, very, very happy to be working with. It's going to be awesome. Um, and of course, Middleton Tech as well. Uh, and the and the Maximo app in, in in particular, even though the driver utility helper is, you know, a huge one too. So I'll plug them both there. But here we go. So the first one I've talked about a few times this week's story today that I'm going to talk about um, is the uh, autonomous vehicle in San Francisco that evaded the police officers. Uh, now, I've talked about it a couple times. We talked about it on the radio show last night. And, um, I talked about it, I think, in the podcast. And maybe, no, we didn't talk about it on Thursday. But it was a couple times through the week. And so this will probably be the last time I'll talk about it again. Uberliftdrivers.com. There's two different articles on it on there. You can find them. Go check it out. But And the one that's called Autonomous Vehicle Evades Police Officer has the three-minute video in it of it happening. So, um, you know, uh, Zoom... Waymo and Cruise all operate in the city of San Francisco. Um, there is no way that the police officers are able to shut down those cars. And that's what you can see in the video. If you go to uberliftdrivers.com or follow the link in the show notes to go check out this video, because there's no means of communication there that can help stop one of these autonomous vehicles if and when there is a problem, which there was. And the police were unable to do anything. It, it evaded them. It, it took off through an intersection, pulled back over. You know, I mean, eventually, obviously, they get it under control. But this is not okay. This is not okay. The, the sound on the video is you will just hear me and the co-host uh, speaking because it didn't come through from the video. Um, but all it is is people on the sidewalk shooting video and laughing and saying things like, there goes another one. There goes another one. So in San Francisco, this is very common. They're getting sick of seeing these things. Um, I will say, it, the cop pulled it over. It took off through an intersection after the cop walked up to the door. No ticket was issued. Now, I know there's not a driver, but no ticket was issued. No fine was issued. Nothing was issued to cruise for this. Now, if you were pulled over by a police officer at 11 o'clock at night in San Francisco, and as he walked up to your door, you gunned it through an intersection, would you get a ticket? Would you get a fine? Would you be arrested? Huh. Well, in this case, nothing happened. And in fact, the police dispatch were unable to get crews on the line, the, the crews emergency line, for over a minute and a half after it had run through the intersection. So they pulled it over. They still weren't on that because they figured maybe they'll take care of it. After it took off, you'll see in the video that the police officers follow it. That's when the call, or that's when it became from dispatch, we'll get in contact with crews, have them shut this vehicle down. Took over 90 seconds. 
And maybe that doesn't sound like much to you, but think about how much damage a car could do in 90 seconds. Okay? And the prior time to it when you watch the video. I mean, there's just so many things that could have gone wrong here. And to say, to be one of the few that says, but it didn't. Yeah, okay, whatever. You know, these things are running without, we know for a fact they don't have working equipment. The LiDAR doesn't work under certain weather conditions. Uh, it has trouble at night uh, distinguishing uh, people from objects, uh, certain ethnic backgrounds, things like that. It is really, these things belong in a test city where people do not live. Not one of, not San Francisco, a severely populated city with hills and everything all over. I get that it's a good testing place for these cars, but only if nobody lived there and people do live there. And if you're not going to write tickets or anything for that, well, then everybody should be able to just break any uh, motor vehicle laws they want. Because why are these companies getting off? Clearly, we can figure that out. They have slid money into the right hands. So they can do what they want. Not cool. Um, okay. The city council on uh, up in Seattle talking about... Uh, I have it on this part. Talking about the payout measure, okay? I know that we've talked about this before, but I'm going to put this in there again because I did see one thing that I think is very strange in the legislation. Um, it was about the... Um, I can't, I don't see it now. Uh, so in future pay up bill, um, series of transparency and equ equity issues, um, including right to access restrooms, discrimination protections and protections from unfair deactivation. Okay. I agree with discrimination protections and I agree with protections from unfair deactivation. The restaurant privilege thing is... I agree that we all have to be able to go to the restaurant or restroom, of course. However, a lot of these restaurants get people who come in there and say, yeah, I'm a dasher and just use the restroom and they're not dashers. I know this for a fact in my city. So, and I've talked to other people where, you know, the basically having been a restaurant bar manager, bartender, and doing all the jobs that are required in that field, for many, many years, many, many years, I know for a fact that people come in, try and come in and use the bathroom. And a lot of times they go in and trash it, you know? And I'm not saying it's okay at a gas station, but a gas station bathroom is kind of expected. Everybody that walks in there, that's just what's allowed. These places have their customers that come in to dine, whatever. If everybody was being respectful, if everybody truly was on the platforms, that's different if you need to use it. This opens up a whole different book of worms. Um, hopefully the pay up doesn't follow exactly in the footsteps of AB5 because as we talked about before, it was they were only going to target the ride share. Now they're getting this big fight about you need to include delivery services. Again, we are watching the fall of California right now in terms of how the gig economy payment will go. California very likely could be in a franchise model or gig companies leaving the state not too long from now. Prop 22 isn't going to last forever. They can't afford to pay Prop 22. I know that we all want more pay. However, they can't afford to pay Prop 22 in California. They cannot afford it. Um, that is a fact, and they can't deplete the other markets because of it. So they're trying to figure out, like, that was the best solution, but it's really not a solution. So that'll be in there. Um, Let's see. Uh, Uber in uh, Switzerland um, tried to fight the uh, ruling from the top court in Zurich that uh, that they start treating all of the drivers as employees. Um, what did the the one comment I found interesting in this article, and I I know this to be true, and I've talked about it before several times, um, but uh, here it is. The California-based company whose cab service uh, what has expanded worldwide stands accused in many countries of bypassing national labor protection standards and shunning uh, collective negotiation with drivers who work in freelance terms. 
This is something we're fighting in this state right now. AB5, PRO Act, H1234, New Jersey, all these states, we're fighting this. We want to be independent contractors. And if you if if the comparison's this, here's part of the problem is that we're one of the only countries that you can be an independent contractor. Some might have some extenuating circumstances that allow you to be, but we're one of the only countries where you can you have the freedom to choose how and when you want to work as long as that work is available and you can make and you can do it legally, pay your taxes, and you can make it work. That's what this is about, being an independent contractor, having multiple streams of income. I don't want to be part of a union. I don't want to have a single job. I don't want to have a boss. And I don't want to have a schedule where the, then I can't take care of my son's needs because I'm a single parent. So, <laughs> you know what, guys? Like, flexibility is a must. W-2s don't come with that. Just remember that. We've talked about this. They don't come with that. Even you can ask the California people who know about Prop 22, okay? But it, it, we need to keep independent. It's bigger than that. We need to keep independent contractorship alive in this country. It's a must. When you see the word PRO Act, no. No on the PRO Act. And if you, if you just want to disagree with me, at least look it up first because I doubt you'll disagree with me. It takes away the freedoms of all people in this country. And the last thing I want to discuss here is, uh, so I've talked about this before too and seeing it coming, um, you know, the uprising of 500% ish and more in 2020 April um, for the three to six months on the rise of delivery and Instacart and all these platforms. Well, TechCrunch put out an article this week, um, you know, saying that the boom continued into early 2022 and startups like uh, Getter, Zap, Zepto, um, they were trying to raise quick money. But here's, basically it's talking about the slowdown of this. And here's the here's the bottom line. Uh, here's the best part of it, it or mention I can make. Um, there are signs of correction. Instacart citing market turbulence, quote unquote, last month slash, slashed its valuation 40% and stopped hiring. And DoorDash delivers, same type of thing. So guys, all of this is in the notes. That's 13 minutes of the news in under 13 minutes. And I'm out of here. See you tomorrow, Sunday Funday. Peace.